Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation. This TV series explores a wide variety of issues that relate to peace, social justice, and nonviolent social change. In 1981, the United Nations established the International Day of Peace to encourage individuals, organizations, and nations to create practical acts of peace on a shared date. The first peace day was celebrated on in September 1982. In 2002, the United Nations General Assembly officially declared September 21 as the permanent date for the International Day of Peace. <clears throat> for 2010, volunteers from the Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation, Veterans for Peace Chapter 109, the Rachel Corey Foundation, Media Island International, Earthbound Productions, and other groups collaborated to produce a truly stunning and inspirational display and international conversation. These events marked the uh, International Day of Peace in Olympia, Washington on Monday and Tuesday, September 20 and 21 of 2010. <clears throat> this month's TV program brings you inside the celebration to show you what occurred. It's really fascinating and multi-dimensional. Dennis Mills videotaped the entire event and edited his video footage for use on this program. The program features about 30 minutes of Dennis's video footage uh, interspersed with conversations with Dennis and with Douglas Mackey, who provided overall leadership and a tremendous amount of hands-on work to plan, organize, and carry out Olympia's participation in the 2010 International Day of Peace. Our community and the world owe a great debt of thanks to Doug Mackey, Jody Mackey, Dennis Mills, Terry Zander, and many other volunteers who worked extremely hard and creatively to make all of this happen. The celebration of peace started at 12 noon on Monday, September 20, and continued around the clock more than 24 hours, following the sun around the earth until Tuesday evening, September 21. Phone conversations with different parts of the world took place throughout the night for more than uh, 20 hours uh, during the festival. Near the end of this program, we'll enjoy a live conversation with uh, Hakim, who's one of the leaders in the Afghan Youth Peace Volunteers, uh, and they pr participated in the overnight event, and we've developed a special relationship with them since October 2009. So for this program, I'm happy to welcome Dennis Mills Thank and you. Douglas Mackey. Uh, they're uh, well-informed and well-credentialed guests because they've done so much work on this. Uh, both Dennis and Douglas worked very hard to organize Olympia's activities uh, for this event. 
and they both have really an inspiring track record of uh, creative visioning for ways to work for peace, and they skillfully and they energetically follow through and make good things happen. So it's great to have you on the show. Um, Doug, why did you want to organize something special for Olympia on the International Day of Peace? Olympia certainly is the kind of community that um, one would think would have some kind of uh, event. And um, when <clears throat> we developed a closer and closer relationship with the Afghan Youth Peace Volunteers and saw that this would be the third year that they've done something uh, on the, the Day of Peace, they, uh, or on the weekend following the official day, uh, they'll go up into the mountains and have a presentation and invite the world to join them um, for that particular day. We and they do that through their videos? They've, they've and their website. Their, and website, their website has yeah. a very specific invitation to come and do, to join them in Bamiyan province for the trek. And uh, we decided that this is a good time for us to evolve our ongoing efforts around this time. There have been other sim uh, actually dissimilar um, uh, commemorations, either through memorials for um, you know, a way of looking at uh, the cost of war. This was a, an um, uplifting approach to uh, join them and to end join in conversations around the world with them. Yeah. So what did you hope that this special event would, would accomplish? And give an opportunity to more people to experience the telephone conversations, to provide an opportunity to lay out the world, and as, as we'll talk ab yeah. about it, a map of the world was laid out, and then to place in the appropriate locations the words for peace in the different languages of the world. Right. And we'll see this yeah. in, Daniel, in Dennis's video. Uh, also, uh, Glenn, the preparation for this event involved a large part of the community in a variety of ways, and you'll see video clips of young people uh, different internationals involved in it. So mm -hmm. it really was bringing together what we saw as an international day of peace involving the internationals even in our own community. And So what inspired you, Dennis, to, to work so hard on this? Well, I've had the opportunity to become involved with internationals hosting uh, refugee students in our home that uh, have attended the college. Uh, my daughter lives and teaches in China. We've adopted a daughter from India. And I've traveled extensively, and when I found out about the uh, young men and some women in Afghanistan that were reaching out, it just had it resonated with me, Glenn. Okay. In a, in a few seconds, we'll watch uh, the first part of your mm -hmm. video about this. What, are, what will we see in these first 14 minutes or so? You'll see the preparation going on at the... Uh, the procession, the procession of the species yeah. studio, the art, which, studio. The art yeah. studio, where they actually made the flags uh, with a hundred different languages yeah. representing uh -huh. the different countries involved. Uh, you'll see young people, uh, you'll see uh, volunteers, volunteers for peace, others that are uh, there preparing it. And uh, I think you'll enjoy just the, the fun that's going into that. Plus yeah. you'll hear a little bit of music. And why don't you just give a real promo a little on the music that's going on there on Dana Lyons and others. Oh, right. In the background of the introduction is uh, Dana Lyons and uh, Jane Goodall singing uh, the song Circling the Globe, which was a song developed for the International Day of Peace. Mm -hmm. One of Jane's visions is that she's a part of through her youth group, Roots and Shoots, which is an international effort, is to have people um, in, around the globe um, taking these ceremonial doves and flying them. And so that is the underpinning for the uh, preparation that you'll see. So we have a few minutes of that, and then we go into the, uh, the, the context, which is rooted in the indigenous people, the first peoples who lived in this area. Mm -hmm. And they do a welcome, and, and we'll mm -hmm. see that following yeah. on. So why don't we watch that? Let's do that. The opening so now, there's, right? there's, yeah. it's, it's good stuff. And so let's uh, tune into that. And um, time to bury the guns. Our time has come. 
and we have begun to circle the world. Our time has come, and we have. Once a year we circle the world, saying, "Ain't it time to bury the guns?" Our time has come. And we have begun to circle the world. It's a dream and it's a vision. It's a prayer that we may see when every person, every creature will be treated with. Dignity. When every war will be a memory, we never shall. We are Iranian Americans live in in Olympia. My name is Mansoor, and I've lived in Olympia for 25 years. Uh, you know, I moved to this country when I was a teenager, and so forth. And we are here to help the uh, international. Peace Day by writing peace in our language, uh -huh. which is you know Farsi uh -huh. okay. uh, or Iranian you know, or Persian also. It's called. That's a, did you grow up? Okay, great. Uh, my name is James Yusuf Yi. James Yusuf Yi. I'm the former U.S. Army Muslim chaplain at Guantanamo Bay, where I served back in 2003, objecting to the torture of prisoners in this prison camp by U.S. military and U.S. personnel. Uh, right now, at this time, I am actually painting a flag that says, uh, that says Salam, meaning peace in the Arabic language. It's a song with many rhythms that is sung in many tongues. It's a giant snake dance in every country beneath the sun our time has come and we have begun to circle the world what if we could circle the world flying peace doves beneath the sun giant 20 foot wings of fabric that are made by everyone once a year we circle the world saying ain't it time to bury the guns our time has come and we have begun to circle the world can you tell me what you're sharing, what you're sharing? What is it? and it's what is it uh-huh what beach did you get it off of yesterday? Barefoot? Barefoot Park Beach? Thank you, because this is a sports that has energy in it, and this will help me. Thanks very much. I'm putting it right here. It's nice to have a resource like uh, Earthbound Productions and mm -hmm. the procession of the species to let their studio be used for this purpose. Mm -hmm. um, at the end, just before we watch this, I, I mentioned that uh, the next thing that we'll be seeing, actually, is the um, uh, this, this event was grounded in the first people who lived here. The um, history behind that involvement in this actually has the word reconciliation involved in it as well. There are a number of folks with a native background who are working with the community, uh, particularly like on Thanksgiving morning. Uh, what we call Thanksgiving is not celebrated the same way by Native people, but they believe in having a platform for reconciliation. And so that group of folks um, invited the local tribes uh, to participate in it. What's a tradition among Native American people is to, if you have a potlatch or a gathering, is to have the peoples of those lands where you're gathering welcome everyone uh, to their land. And so that was a tradition we were able to um, and you'll notice that the first two people were not from this land. Right. And so when we do uh, show um, Mark, who is from the Chehalis uh, people's group there, 
uh, he is, and so he gives the greeting uh, from them. Uh -huh. And and he also makes uh, the a, a point that that the Afghan youth peace volunteers are doing too about uh, the, the, the 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 peace commitment and the um, there's there's a level beyond below beyond um, what the uh, 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 it's, it's, it's not a superficial it's a very profound sense of peace and the the young people in Afghanistan with Afghan youth peace volunteers they get it and and uh, Mark Olson with the uh, Shahilas uh, gets it and, well and, and he also message. he also tells how it used to be yeah. very very early on with the native peoples when. Yeah. Peace was what everyone knew. There right. wasn't a word for peace, right. and you'll hear that. Right, in, in it's, the it's like like fish wouldn't have a word for water because they're immersed in it all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. Okay, so let let's watch um, that, and this runs for a number of minutes. Right. But but it's uh, it'll move through several people. So let's let's watch that part now. I welcome you all to this first International Day of Peace commemoration in Olympia. These are our simple beginnings for what may continue. I especially thank those of you, and I recognize some faces of people who came down to paint the um, banners of peace. We have about a hundred banners in uh, different languages, including the local uh, local language of the of the Chehalis and other tribes. Uh, that word we will put up last tonight. The sequence is to honor the first people, and they are honoring us with a welcome. I've asked uh, one of the gentlemen of the Olympia area, who now lives in Montana, to come and talk a little bit about his inspiration from um, the Afghan Youth Peace Volunteers and how there's a connection to the old way that he has learned from Johnny Moses and others here. Bill, Cody, will you lead us into the welcome from First People? Thank you. And what I'd like to do to start this is to ask Brian uh, to come up here and to introduce, uh, we have a guest from this land here to begin us off. And then I'd like to share a few more words after he starts. Uh, Brian, if you come on up. Um, you'd like to introduce your friend? Sure. Um, first, uh, thanks uh, everybody coming and uh, appreciate uh, being asked to be here. Thanks to all the people who put it on. And I'm especially happy uh, to introduce somebody from this land. For me, it's uh, always a blessing when I am able to do this, uh, to ask permission to be here because I too am a visitor in this land. And it means a lot to me to introduce uh, Mark Colson. Um, from the Chehalis people, Dakota, Yurak, did I get it right? And um, to say a few words, thanks. As we watch a lot of our um, prophecies unfold and watching uh, erosion affect the world, um, it reminds me of a lot of stories that my, my father and my grandfather and them used to talk and uh, coming together, pre you know, uh, uh, living a way of life again without anger, greed, jealousy, or lust. Uh, there was a time when my ancestors walked this land and there was no such word as peace. It was a, it was a way of life. It was what we did. Uh, there was no hatred, there was no greed, there was no jealousy, there was no lust. We had a strong connection with the earth, with each other. And as we watch the events unfold in the world today, it's really scary. In a lot of our ceremonies now, we really talk to each other. We really are sharing with these young ones of what it was like. A few thousand years ago, we had a rally like this. We had it up over here at the sacred place is called Pachom. 
or to swap this Mount Rainier is what they call it nowadays is we let a little bit of this human nature our animal instinct take over in our lives we allowed a rootlet seed of destruction to sprout And just like a blackberry vine, this seeds of destruction spread in all four directions. And so we had a big rally like this, and we did it up on top of that mountain, praying for the Creator to have pity on us. So that we don't have to live like this. And the Creator, He laughed. He said, well, you guys did this to yourselves. I gave you everything you needed. You did this to yourselves. But the Creator had pity on us humans. He gave us a little time to hide. He said if we paid attention to what the tree people and the plant people are trying to show us something, if we pass on these teachings to these to these next generations if we don't allow this anger this greed the jealousy the lust into our lives once again the earth will be a beautiful place he created a, a bloodless war for us again we still practice that game today, Slahal. When we play that game nowadays, it's a reminder of all of us. For these guys. That we need to walk on this earth gently. We all need to try a little bit harder. And to find a way to eliminate that anger, greed, jealousy, and lust to pay attention to what the plant people and the tree people are trying to teach us. They're trying to show us, if we just look, to have a root system to provide shade for that next generation. To nourish that next generation with what we leave behind. But most important, what these plant people and these tree people are trying to teach all of us here and these are what my dad used to say, the most powerful kind of teachings because they're done without a spoken word. They're done by example. And that is to give 100% all of the time. That's what they teach us. And so I'm thankful that I'm here today to have a little small voice for these guys that maybe we can all tread lightly on this earth coexist pay attention to what God really gave us he gave us all kinds of teachings right here in front of our eyes we just pay attention so I want to welcome you to this land where my ancestors used to walk thank you for all the ones who put this together all around the globe and I pray that you know we don't have to go back to this big war again that we can all start paying attention and live our lives for these guys that there's something here for them so I want to thank you guys again for all coming I said until I was 40 years old I thought I was never creative and I've made 1500 drums including this drum here and I was taught in a traditional way that every time you make a drum a new life is born the love is stronger than that. I want to say that to those kids over there. When I heard that you want a country to grow up in, I know the love is stronger than all the fear and all the anger and all the hurt that we suffer. And it's different in the United States, but it's still there in different ways. And I know from my, I'm 66, from when I was young, when these young people are talking to one another, that's going to change the world. That will change them. That will change how you look at the world. 
And I want to thank you, whether you're here in Olympia or you're in Afghanistan, for the courage for you to take this stand. And what we can do is send our prayer, our love. You brought a seed to us for this light. I wore red today because that's our tradition. The life goes on. Our Mother Earth doesn't stop. She gives us life. And the black is what we have to live in. It's what we're living in today. And it's the strength that Mark talks about with our ancestors, with remembering someone that loved you and carrying that forward. And that we can give that to one another. I think you know, that peace is that place when you look at a little baby and it's safe and that love. And why don't we all deserve that every moment? So I'd like to, we'll gather around the drum and offer our songs because they come from our heart and they're probably as strong as our words and thank you. That was great stuff. <laughs> and I appreciate that not only had uh, uh, Mark Olson said something reminiscent of the Afghan Youth, youth Peace Volunteers, but also uh, Bill Cody did with he talked about uh, love is stronger than all the fear. So th there's this universal theme that's starting well, to crop up. Well, as a matter of fact, Douglas, you were mentioning on their science in Bamiyan was yes. very close to what uh, Bill the, Almost the, the peace exact part. same wording the at, at, on their part. and in their videos and in their, yeah. um, on their yeah. website. So it's, um, it's a universal experience. And I, and for, well, I guess it's a good point of view, certainly, yeah. that love has that power. Right. Uh, now, uh, we'll, we'll be looking at the uh, map that was laid out on the ground, and Zoltan Grossman, who's a professor at the Evergreen State College, had very meticulously laid out a map of the whole Earth that expanded over a few hundred feet of, of width. Um, and this is down at Heritage Park at Fifth and Water. Local people will recognize the site, and others will just appreciate the green, and then the, the outline of all the... Uh, well, lands. and what they're sticking in the ground is basically the signs which say peace in the language that is within that geographical area right. which Dr. Zoltan Grossman laid out for us. And, the, and these were made at the studio uh, mm -hmm. of the procession of the species, and you have a sample they here. They were, and um, the um, Chimbrian, and then I'm going to show the Salish um, I, I've got the, yeah. uh, the Salish technique, is, yeah, is the from Salish word. Would, this would have been a broadly used language after the, a, a word for peace uh, was developed uh, because, as, as Mark mentioned, um, they didn't really have a word long ago. The peace was the way you live. And this would be from this area. This People outside been, of here don't know that Salish would refer to the, the general the Puget linguistic Sound area. Um, the base, yeah. the base language, language. Yeah. yes, yeah. Uh, not necessarily the the Salish word. Excuse me, the uh, wouldn't have been uh, Chehalis uh, specifically. And I know there are different words for some of the other tribes that right. we that we've heard, but it's been an, a chance to honor the Native American languages because there was the um, gosh the uh, Chickasaw and the Cree and the uh, Blackfeet and many other um, Native American mm -hmm. words for peace were also put up geographically where, where they would have gone along with the Hindi and the you know Hebrew yeah. and yeah. on and on yeah. and on. You had well, well over a hundred languages so that's yes. an exciting thing. Um, one of the main features uh, of this event was was the live conversations that existed uh, with people around the world as this more than 24-hour uh, event uh, played out uh, and you connected people from Olympia with uh, young people and adults in Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Israel, Singapore, Denmark, England, Africa, 10 locations in the United States uh, and some were very early in the morning or very late our time in order to catch a time when other people would be awake. Um, the uh, can we talk some more about that? The Afghan Youth Peace Volunteers, um, the people that we've had a relationship with since October of 2009, shared their "Why Not Love" uh, message of peace from Bamiyan in Afghanistan throughout the night. They're roughly 12 hours off from us, mm -hmm. so they 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 were a major part of this. That's their 
um, message now, uh, and it's uh, evolved from about a year ago when we first were talking with them. Um, you know, love is how we will ask for peace. Mm -hmm. Love is how we ask for peace. And then um, they uh, were looking forward to having a, um, a part in the peace jirga that uh, was called by Karzai some months ago. Yeah. And so they thought... A well, jirga is a, an Afghan it, gathering, a, yes. an important official decision-making yes. gathering. And th yeah. they wrote, they hand-stitched the question, why not love, as a peace strategy that they would be then giving to the representatives that were at the peace jirga. And um, so that's, that was when they really crafted the strong message, the question, why not love? And they've asked others to join them with that question. And um, they were, shortly we'll see next, the video of the opening ceremony. So we'll hear the sitar, you'll get the sense of the music that's going on to set the stage of an international day. And the drumming too, that uh, Bill yes. Cody made the drum for that. And the original music is the drum of reconciliation that starts out, the Native uh, Americans start the music and then we symbolically went over to New Zealand and came across and picked up the sitar in India and then finished uh, with the Native American flute played by a local artist. Um, and you'll see this in the background as we watch uh, the opening ceremony. Yeah. You'll also note that uh, we don't take a direct shot of the drum or the drum players uh, because this is a very important religious ceremony for them and uh, that was something that uh, we were asked not to take videos of and so we honored that. Mm -hmm. You can hear it in the background, you can see a little mm -hmm. bit of it through the sitar playing, but mm -hmm. we were zeroing in on the sitar. Yeah. Okay. And, and spirit, it's a spiritual ceremony, uh, yeah. perhaps is a, a good word. That would yeah. be better. So, we'll yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's a matter of respecting that and not being intrusive. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. well let's, let's watch that. I think our, our uh, next um, video section is especially exciting because one of our first contacts was um, brought about because of the tragedy in, in, uh, in Pakistan. We've met a number of people from Pakistan in the community in our effort to support them and raise money and awareness of what's happened in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So we got to know this, them this, pretty the, well. Including the flooding. Especially right. the flooding. Flooding. 20 million people were put out yeah. of their homes. Yeah. And so we had a chance to meet and get to know some of these folks, and they participated in this mm -hmm. in a bigger way because of our connection now. And they, as you'll hear, the, the youth in Pakistan just took over the Skype call. It was And amazing. what's neat is we were able to get the signal coming from Traditions Cafe, stream it over to Heritage Park to where we had Internet connection going on, yeah. for the whole time that we're there. And so the, this is the first that they were able to um, use the Internet to reach out to their friends and relatives in Pakistan. And the Pakistan youth were singing to the Afghan youth on the Internet. So that's what makes right. it so special. And the two adults that we see here are, are Pakistanis who live in the Olympia area. Yes. Right. So that's the, the, the local grounding. And then the, the Afghan and Pakistani yeah. kids are... Zahid and, and Naimat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of them is a, a you know, recently active duty uh, soldier for the United States. So mm -hmm. he also has another special uh, role in the peace movement. Yeah. That way. yeah. Good. They are singing uh, peace for everyone. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I will translate what they're saying. This is all the youth in uh, flood stricken areas, and they're saying uh, uh, peace and. Uh, they're, they're saying peace in the world. Let, let there be peace in the whole world. Let there be peace in the whole world. This is the voice of uh, Pakistan youth. Let there be peace in the whole world. Let there be peace in the whole world. Let there be peace in the whole world. The voices, as you can hear, of a person you who had just gone through a tremendous period of, of flood and, and, and terrible times. And that, that scene that you was before, uh, you heard Hakim, who you will hear later on when we do a live connection here in right. the studio. Toward the end of the program. Towards the end of the program. Yeah. So he was also uh, talking throughout the night and throughout the day, too. While we're right, there. right, yes. One of the featured uh, parts of this event was uh, Olympia's Bernie Meyer, who has really made a name for himself uh, throughout this region and really around the world. Uh, he's become quite an expert on Mohandas K. Gandhi, the Mahatma, uh, and he's been making public appearances, as we all know uh, and appreciate, in character as Gandhi. Uh, and he's been he's so authentic in the message and the demeanor that um, some of the top Gandhi scholars and top Gandhian activists in India have invited him there repeatedly to come and portray Gandhi to this new generation of people in India. We'll see in this uh, video that comes up next, uh, Bernie as Gandhi came and spoke to the uh, International Day of Peace on the evening before his um, most recent trip to, to uh And Glenn, one India. of the pictures that you haven't seen, but thanks to Douglas, I was able to get four of the pictures of him in Chandigarh where he uh, pulled the out the... In India. Yes, and that's yeah. in India, where he pulled out the banner that we all had a chance oh. to sign. You'll see him oh, very holding good. that banner out in Heritage Park, yeah. but then you'll see him presenting that banner in India. Oh, so that was good. just a little special treat oh. we put in there. Okay. So there's several clips uh, yeah. that we'd like to, well, let, let, to run there. Let's watch that. I have to mention that I speak to you with a dual personality. The historic Gandhi, who lived from 1869 to 1948, and Bernie Meyer, who's called American Gandhi. I own a hunter! And still kicking. I am given a banner to take with me, connecting me here with those over there. This peace festival that Doug mentioned will have representatives from 20 countries, including Pakistan, Indonesia, China, UK, US, Sri Lanka, and other places. The banner says, we must be the change we want to be in the world. Well, we've covered a lot of things from your event. Um, before we do the closing uh, segment of your video where it has the doves circling the earth, we, we do want to make sure that people know that they can connect with the organizations that we've been talking about and collaborating with. Uh, for information about the International Day of Peace, September 21 of every year now, people can contact www.internationaldayofpeace.org. Mm -hmm. um, the, to watch these beautiful and inspiring and moving short videos from the Afghan Youth Peace Volunteers, uh, people can visit uh, www.ourjourneytosmile.com, and then there's also a blog through there. Uh, we also encourage people to see www.youthpeacevolunteers.org. And um, 
connecting with people of other countries uh, is possible through uh, an organization called Friends Without Borders that you're, you've been working with. It started in, 19, uh, in 2005 by people in India to help it, make, help it become more possible for people in India to connect with uh, kids uh, in Pakistan. So that's powerful because those countries have traditional animosity and maybe the kids can have a breakthrough there. Um, and that effort has had a number uh, of supporting organizations helping them out. Um, so we encourage people to see www.friendswithoutborder.org. Um, and we also want to thank the organizations that have helped to make this event in Olympia um, effective. We listed a number at the beginning of the program. And um, the, 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 toward the end, there was a meditative peace walk around the lake mm -hmm. uh, led by a local Buddhist priest uh, named Miles, whom everybody knows and loves, um, and who has a good sense of humor. But he has a good presence for leading these meditative peace walks around the lake. And then uh, volunteers constructed and flew three giant doves around the, um, the map that Zoltan Grossman had produced on the floor. Literally on the around ground. the world. Around the world, mm -hmm. and this was Jane Goodall's design, and people may know of Jane Goodall through her work in, in Africa with uh, chimpanzees and others. Jane and Goodall that. Institute. Yeah, um, so can you, and you were on top of the Capitol Center building. Yes, I had the up. opportunity to go all the way up uh, to the top of the roof and mm -hmm. uh, take a picture of the group coming from around the lake, and, and uh, the doves were um, in motion, and then we included the song that Dana Lyons, who's from Washington, a uh, wonderful folk singer and creator, uh, along with uh, Jane. You can hear Jane's voice. And you'll mm -hmm. notice that the lyrics are just totally match the okay. doves as they're flying. Okay, so let's, let's watch that, the doves circling the earth in downtown Olympia. What we're gonna yeah. see next will be um, some uh, singing bowls that are performed by uh, local musicians, uh, Carl and Dave. And I have to confess that of the people who participated in all of the event, that this was a standout segment for them because it brings a form of inner peace from just being there in the presence of these bulls. He has been over to Nepal um, and uh, these are created by um, people in Tibet and Nepal and in that area, Nepal and in that area, some of them are over 300 year old bowls. And he has over a hundred, but there were 32 of them that were selected for this performance. And um, because of the um, popularity and the depth at which it brings you to an inner peace, they've made a commitment to perform four times a year at the solstices and at the equinoxes this would, of course, be one of them, mm -hmm. September 21st. Yeah. So it, um, even our members of Fellowship of Reconciliation are insisting that we keep the singing bowls. Right. It's only a 45-second clip, but uh -huh. you know it's one that uh, you'll see the, yeah. the peaceful presence. S several people who were present there have told me since how much they appreciated those oh. singing bowls. Okay. Well, and you can hear them for miles okay. because of the lake. Ah, okay, well, let's, let's watch it in here. Okay. Well, let's try something special here. Um, we want to have a live conversation with Hakim, who's in Afghanistan, and you know. Um, who is the, the young uh, person who is the coordinator or the support leader uh, with this uh, Afghan Youth Peace Volunteers. The actual leader is 15, as you know, but this is the, the adult contact point. Um, and uh, we'll see if we can get him on the phone on the uh, Skype. Skype, actually, yeah. Not, we not have Skype on a cell phone, and that's going to a computer in and, California. And then the connection over to Afghanistan. Right, and the, con the contact point in California is John Siliphant, who is the founder of Friends Without Borders, and that's one of the groups that we connect with. This, this, is, this is just an amazing thing that, that it, 
it relates to what you folks were doing on International Peace Day in Olympia, and now we're doing it right here in the in the studio. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Let me turn the speaker on. Okay. There we go. And it sounds like uh, hello. This is uh, Douglas. Uh, John. Hey, John and Hakeem. Oh, fantastic. Hi. Hakeem, can you say hello? Hi, is that Douglas or Glenn? Uh, this is uh, Douglas and Dennis and Glenn, all three of us. We're here. Uh, we welcome you to the television show and um, uh, offer you this opportunity to say hello to the viewers here in uh, Olympia and around the world. Well, we're we're twelve hours off, yes. and we've had a pleasant day today too. It was sunny and mild. We had very good weather here as well. Uh, Glenn is Glenn is sharing, and um, you've just had a couple of visitors there that have been part of our growing work together. Can you tell us a little about the visit that you had? Yes, Kathy Kelly, Jared Owens, and David Smith from the Boston. Created non violence. I visited the Alpha Youth Peace Volunteers over the past five um, days or so. Um, and uh, it was a uh, really safe to face uh, the voices, some of the voices that we have had um, over the past few years. And I remember Jerica Aaron uh, telling us. Um, while we were sitting in the tent at the Bamiyan Peace Park, that and she remembered how she had heard one of the boys, Lala, sing a song, and how uh, she had determined in her heart um, to keep that warm friendship going across the mouth. And finally, we saw her, and, and together we were talking, and um, it was. Unbelievable that anybody would come to detail. Great. Great. Our, our program tonight is going to focus on the International Day of Peace. Um, we've just seen where your group has inspired us to uh, put together uh, a partnership uh, to celebrate the International Day of Peace. Uh, we were on the phone um, almost 27 hours, uh, as you'll recall. Um, how, how was it um, there in Bamiyan? What was it like for you to, um, what did you see uh, the, the, in the boys um, that are part of the uh, Youth Peace Volunteers? Well, that was, um, and John, uh, Dennis, and Glenn, and, uh, and all those who are uh, watching or listening in, it was, it was like looking at a safe haven of love uh, being born and, and growing. Uh, I know the world um, thinks of Afghanistan as a safe haven for terrorists, but that's not true. Um, um, hate um, can go anywhere um, when even the few, but sweet enough, and um, as we were having the conversations over the 27 hour period and international therapy, I was um, greatly warmed by looking at the uh, happiness on the faces of the Afghan youth as they um, we were in a room together and it was like looking at um, a safe place where they could learn, a classroom where they could learn how to relate to other people from all over the world, how, how um, hate can be put aside, which uh, perceptions can be put aside uh, by hearing a voice, another human voice on the phone, uh, by talking 
talk more about everyday things and by sharing with one another the joys and things of life. And um, I think it uh, was uh, something very special for the Afghan youth here. And I hope it was something special for all the rest of you. John, can you speak briefly for, about your experience on the International Day? And I think I think it was just a magical, magical day. I think um, the time of twenty-four hour phone call is pretty is pretty remarkable in itself. But I think the, what that translates into is that the Earth is spinning, and you know you have different countries, different people from different places coming on at their local time, and you really get a sense of that during a 24-hour call, that it's like, okay, they're waking up over here, okay, now it's time, you know, this time is off, and you just you really get a sense that we went around the entire world, and that, you know, really that sense of love and human connection was there everywhere around the entire globe, and I think it's, I think all of us felt a really, um, really honored to be in that space, and and to, to just have that connection together, you know, and, and centered around um, the Afghan youth here, and to just love that they shared with everybody. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. This is Glenn. Um, I want to express my appreciation to you, John, and to Hakim, and to the young people in Afghanistan that you're working with. The governments uh, in pretty much every country in the world, the governments are stuck. And if we are going to have peace, ordinary people have to make peace with other people, even if it means going around the governments. And the, the official news media are stuck also. And if we're going to really communicate around the world, we have to create our own media and bypass the official ones. So I want to thank uh, all of you, and Hakeem, if you could express uh, my appreciation to the young people that you work with, because in our own grassroots, people-to-people -people way, we are making the peace that the governments don't know how to do. I want to uh, thank you for um, being this um, uh, every step is an important step. I would say that uh, the governments are not only stuck, they are drowning. And what you are doing is that represented is to uplift humanity from, from this drowning. And uh, we thank you for that. I want to ask um, Abdullah to say a very quick two lines. Uh, so that this work um, can catch a sense of the deep learning and wish that is in the heart of all these youth who represent the future of Afghanistan, um, who represent the learning in the hearts of all people all over the world. Salam that you are not your hand. Uh, thank you. Well, what I'm saying is um, that he wishes to thank and, uh, all of our Afghanistan and um, all over the world. Uh, in Afghanistan, he says uh, she can always be able to find uh, very few friends. There are very few friends. Uh, we have very few friends, and um, we need to do this more. Abdullahi, this is your grandfather, Dennis, uh, wishing you peace and happiness and that you are well remembered here in Olympia. Thank you for speaking with us tonight. Grandfather, thank you very much. <laughs> grandfather, thank you yes. very much. Tashkar. Tashkar. Um, Chum, Mohabad. 
Nakarim. And um, we wish you a very good. Yes. Thank you. Tashkor. We'll talk to you again. John, thank you. Thank you, Hakeem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Wow. Wow, that was something. <laughs> that was a world premiere yeah. for yeah. the Olympia Fellowship of yeah. Reconciliation. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you for your comments. Too, oh, yeah. Glenn, because that, well, that's, that's what... They, they need to hear. That's that. what these kids are about, is they're, they're doing what the governments can't do, right. and they're doing what the news media can't do, so or don't want to do. Well, thanks for putting this together. This is amazing. Just one more blessing on top of the, the uh, great work you did on September 21, uh, 2021. We'll be able to do a whole show like this someday. This yeah. will be fun. Well, thank you, Glenn. Okay, good. Thanks to you guys for doing this. It's a parade and it's a party Giant puppets with many drums It's a song with many rhythms That is sung in many tongues It's a giant snake dance In every country beneath the sun Our time has come have begun to circle the world. What if we could circle the world, flying peace doves beneath the sun? Giant twenty foot wings of fabric that are handmade by everyone. Once a year we circle the world Saying ain't it time to bury the guns Our time has come And we have begun To circle the world Our time has come And we have begun To circle the world uh, We also want to give a very special thank you to the Afghan Youth Peace Volunteers who yes been inspiring us here in Olympia and people around the world. And uh, so we certainly wish blessings on their continued work. We invite people to visit the websites that uh, are listed with the closing credits. And we invite people to contact the Olympia Fellowship of Reconciliation at our phone and website listed at the end. We're all one human family. We all share one planet. We can create a better world, but we all have to work at it. And the world needs what you have to offer. Thanks.